We start in the tropics, in the core tropics. So what we find will be different, but there'll be different community compositions. So when we first start, we're going to see more tropical groups of fishes and invertebrates and algae. And as we come further south, we get into the subtropics and we're going to see changes in the communities that occur. Different species, um, fewer species, uh, but everywhere we go, and what's happened in the past is that we've, in the islands we've gone to in the region, um, when we've done surveys similar to this, we've increased the known number of species that occur at an island by at least 10%. So if 200 were known, we've found at least another 20, and actually usually more like 20%. So we're increasing the knowledge, so just biological knowledge, of what's in the marine estate around these islands, and that helps management and that sort of thing. But on these trips, we're doing a lot of other, other things as well. We're, using genetic techniques to look at connections between the islands so we know how populations link and move between the islands and we can track back historically where they've come from where the where the populations have come from and that's of particular interest to my team my team but also my colleagues about where things have come from that reach the Kermitic Islands where tropical things have come from we're also looking at um, human impacts on reefs by measuring or by video recording the number of large predators, estimating the number and size. And that gives us an indication of how much fishing pressure there's been on a particular reef, because the big predators are the first things to go when fishing communities come in. And that then goes into how we might model understanding the currents and how they might change in a global warming environment. We might be able to model what species will move where and where, the, where new species arrivals in the Kermitic Islands or even near northern New Zealand where they might be coming from. Does it surprise you that you are still finding new species? It, you know, we're, it's 2017. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it surprises a lot of people. Um, just in New Zealand, we're finding a new species of fish a week. I mean, a lot of people don't realise that. It's quite phenomenal the rate we're finding new species. And so what, um, what we realise is that we're limited more by the ability to go and collect. So these are very remote islands, very few people have been there. But also we're limited in the ability of having enough expertise to actually look at these samples and determine are these a new species or not. And that takes time. And there's not much capacity in New Zealand, in fact, around the world to do that. So there's a, we've got like a backlog of species, species discovery to do, and we're still in the process of doing that. So in my world, it's not a surprise. But I know a lot of people will think that we've discovered everything, but that's what makes these trips so exciting. We don't know what we're going to find, and often we find new things and we're the first to find them, which is really interesting, really exciting. What do you think will be the most interesting things that you will find? Um, I think the video recordings of the large predators will be really interesting because there was a similar measurement done down the Lao chain, which runs from north to south, and as you go further south, they're more remote communities and the islands become less inhabited. In the 1980s, there was a study that showed that predators' numbers increased as you went south, which you'd expect. We're now going back 30 years later and we're going to see, is that still the case? Or are the reefs down the south now just the same as the ones up further north? So for, for me, you know, I can't predict what that's going to be, but we're setting up some questions or hypotheses that we're going to test and we're keen to see what the results of those are going to be. How would you describe the health of our oceans, particularly around the um, South Pacific, if you like, where you are going? Yep. Well, mixed, to say the least. Um, so <clears throat> there's, there's a whole range of diversity of impacts on islands and on reefs. Um, you know, in my lifetime, I've seen big changes in reef systems and, and what you see around a reef system, what you think of normal in a reef system. For example, the Kermitic Islands are unusual in the world, There's a, where they have basically all the criteria to demonstrate that they have been very low impacted by people, in fact, not really detectable impact by people. And there's a, there's a number of criteria around that. They're only one of four places in the world that meet those criteria. So the Kermitic Islands are quite unusual and quite, um, uh, quite, I don't want to call them unique, but special and we should keep them, keep it the way it is because that is our reference point of what a natural system looks like. When you go to other parts of the reef, and I've been everywhere from reefs in Asia to 
the, the Pacific, throughout the Pacific. Um, seeing a reef where you see no big fish, nothing bigger than about that, where you see the corals all broken up, either from dynamite fishing or it's dead because of cyanide poisoning, or just crushed by the volume of people, that's extreme. Or you go to a reef and there's lots of pollution. Um, they're extreme examples, but and there's a whole grade in between the Kumadex and those reefs. And unfortunately, everything seems to be going in one direction, not the other. And so that's why, um, for me, um, a one really important aspect is actually reef protection, or protecting marine systems, because they recover on their own. We don't need to do anything. We protect it, we stop human impact, and we, they'll recover on their own. Hmm. So who's going on this trip, and what sort of expertise will you have? So the expertise ranges from, oh, we've got a, Un unbelievably good underwater photographers and videographers. We're going to be using a relatively new technology called 360 degree video to capture some of this. So that's my museum lens where we can get some of this material and make it available to more people. Among the scientists we've got people like me who are interested in biodiversity and documenting what diversity occurs in an area and that'd probably be about another third to a half of the team. And then we've got geneticists who, who um, specialise in understanding the population genetics of islands and looking at how those islands are linked to each other. So it's a very important role for us. And then we're doing this video system where we actually have some bait with a video set on it and we see how many large predators there are. And we do that in a standard way across all the islands so we can compare all the islands that we're surveying. But it's part of a much larger global project called Global Finprint where they're doing the same project across many, many hundreds of islands around the world. And so they're going to be looking at patterns of impact around the islands of the world and we're part of that group. So really good group of people that will build on the knowledge that we've already developed but also fill in some gaps for us.